Wow. Isn't that so cool? Okay, so <coughs> we are 12, 13 seconds. It's like, I know it's going to turn over to five any second. I'm so excited. Do you, um, huh? Do you have, does it give you a time limit? Like, is it just an I hour? Think that, I think it's four or something like that. Um, we already got a hit love. I don't know who hit love. <laughs> I don't know who it was, but we'll find out. Um, okay, so ah, let me make sure one real quick. Share. And start. Whoops. Share with friends. Oh, okay. All right. Well, welcome to On the Spot with Doris Jones, Labors of Love. And today is our inaugural guest. Oh, wow. um, local talent and creative genius, Kendall Burdett. Say hello, Kendall. Hello, Kendall. <laughs> Thank you so much for honoring us and and letting us put you on the spot today. And um, so for the record, Kendall, can you tell anyone who's watching or may watch later that you were not prepared? I did not give you any questions ahead of time and you are legit going to be put on the spot. I am aggressively unprepared. <laughs> aggressively. That's awesome. Oh, I see Tammy watching. That's great. Okay. So. The first part of this on the spot, Kendall, is a, what's called rapid fire. So I am going to say a word, rapid fire, and you're going to just say what comes to mind. Pop, right. first thing. Right. Okay, rapid uh, fire. Okay, right. Totally free form kind of thing. Exactly. Word association at its best. Are you ready, Kendall? Yeah, this feels like therapy. I like this. <laughs> I don't have any uh, ink spots for you, though. I'm sorry. Right. Okay, otter pops. Cold. <laughs> Kiss. Awkward. Did you say word? Awkward. Awkward. <laughs> Kiss is right. Um, cowboy. Bandana. That was an easy one. I have oh, you have one on. That's rad. Origami. That's my, my COVID. Oh, origami is um, complicating. Did it? Yeah. Yoga. Painful. I don't have flexibility. <laughs> middle name. Curtis is my middle name. Curtis. Nice. Cannabis. <laughs> legal. It's legal in <laughs> California. <laughs> Allegedly. They say it is, but, you know, be careful. Be responsible. That's awesome. Uh, dragon. Ah, oh, fire. Dragon fire. Okay. Soulmate. Mm. Unattainable. <laughs> oh, I feel you, brother. I feel you. I see you. I got you. Uh, massive. Massive attack. <laughs> That's a, am I, I'm probably not supposed to repeat the word, but that helps me. Massive attack. Is that related to something? Massive attack is a, is a uh, band. Oh, I'm so clueless. <laughs> Okay, uh, watch. Word. <laughs> Tattoo. Is it just one word? Like, in, just my watch. Like, like watch or I'm watching you. Oh, yeah. Um, broken. All of my watches are currently broken. My batteries are all... I have two and my batteries are dead and I've never gotten the batteries replaced. Are my um, watches intended to be just one word or can it be like a thought? It can be what... It, anything. Anything. Oh, it's okay. I was going... I was going old school, just like the one where. Okay, <laughs> I was no, like, girl. I, I was, no, girlfriend. I said, almost called you girlfriend. Sorry. Girl. <laughs> no, no. This is your opportunity to flow, brother. Oh, oh I, was, I was limiting my responses to one word. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, we still have eight words, so we're good. Oh, okay. okay. Tattoo. Okay, tattoo. Um, so I don't have any. Um, I don't have any tattoos, and the only reason I don't is not because I feel any particular way about it i never it's a level of commitment that i'm not comfortable with and i can never think of anything like i can never like there's no word or symbol or anything that means that much to me it's not like a, it's not a, an aversion of pain or anything like that it's like it's just not anything that i think that i could pull off much in the same way that like i keep trying hats like i keep trying to be a hat guy it's not for me like i don't think a tattoo is for me 
you know what I mean? But one of these Friday the 13th, I might get super basic and get like a a star or something. And if, if, if I did get a tattoo, I'd probably like on my arm, like somewhere that isn't like totally visible, but like secretly visible. Maybe a tramp stamp. I'll probably get a tramp stamp. Yeah, okay. Okay. I was waiting for that. Okay. <laughs> I was like, when's he gonna get to um peanut butter? All right, peanut butter is um I think chunky peanut butter is gross. Creamy peanut butter is the only like is the only real option. Chunky peanut butter, like it gets caught in your teeth too easily. I uh consume a significant amount of creamy peanut butter. Um during the lockdown phase here in the age of pandemia, um I've i my diet is heavily consisted of peanut creamy peanut butter and not organic either. Not like whole food. <laughs> let's be let's be clear, not organic. Jif peanut butter sandwich is with uh, Nutella. Did a lot, did a little bit so that COVID nineteen pounds that everyone's talking about. Yeah, I got to that like in week two. <laughs> this is much better. I was I was so is funny. That I was just... the, is that gonna make the unattainable soulmate harder for us, you think? Depends on <clears throat> depends on what they're into. This I'm is true. We're cuddling, I'm probably more cuddly now. I like this a lot. These responses are a lot better. I misunderstood at first. I was literally I'm so like, sorry. Like psychotherapy. Go... I'm like, it's gotta be one word. <laughs> this is way better. Okay, good. Whew. How about rock? Rock. Rock. So my father, who's retired now, but he's a geologist by profession. That's what I think of when I think of rock. Mm. And uh in terms of like I don't have that, like I don't have the scientific. I didn't get the science, like science and math are, are have eluded me, but like, I do appreciate Like one of my favorite places on earth is the desert. I like the desert. Mm. When, as soon as this is, as soon as state parks open, I'm going to Anza Borrega desert. I'm going to sit in the desert and wear canvas and wear burlap sacks like, like John the Baptist. Not a religious thing. I just <laughs> like, I've always liked that. And maybe, I maybe have some locusts and honey. I like that kind of like self-denial life, like life of a Nazarene kind of thing. I'm this doesn't make you. This doesn't make you worry about the what they call the murder hornets. Apparently, there's something called murder hornets. Well, up until yesterday, yeah, like I was like, oh, and I'd been avoiding the. It's so funny. I'd, I'd been in, avoiding the news, and I thought, you know what? Today, maybe maybe the news has calmed down a little bit. And first headline was like murder hornets. I'm like, okay, <laughs> so, news is out. Got it. I'm gonna go back to binge watching. Um, no, the news, sense. you tell the news that it's overdoing it or whatever. It goes, hold my beer, and it one ups itself. Oh, huh? yeah, we're, we're, you know what? If, I, if someone were to move the script and wanted to write, like, something terrifying, and they wanted, like, a, a and you and, and I put murder hornets, like, that wouldn't get, like, that wouldn't get, <laughs> that sounds too cheesy. Like, the, like that's not, okay, what are you, lazy? Is that, like, a <laughs> something else? That sounds like a placeholder. Like you, you couldn't think of a of a scientific name, so you're like, I'll come, I'll, I'll, I'll circle back around to this. For right now, it's murder hornets in brackets, <laughs> but it's those that exist. Remember the, remember the winter vortex a couple of years ago, and that sounded fake, and that was that killed people, and that was real. <laughs> and murder hornets. So I wanted to tell you real quick that Tammy says she eats pretzel sticks with Jip. Oh, she does. Yep. Oh, I should pull up the chat. And um. I'll, I'll tell you stuff like that, hon. You got more important things to worry about. So the next okay. word, is, the next word is ghost. I believe in them. First of all, I think that they're. I don't. Th I think ghosts have gotten a bad rap because we kind of lump ghosts in with, um, like, ex like exorcism movies and stuff, like, bad and rap. like the actual devil. And I don't think that that's what ghosts are at all. I think spirits are just kind of always around, and they're like, we're not we're not really worried about spooking people. We're just kind of here trying to help. Like, you know what I mean? I don't think that, I think they get a bad rap in terms of being spooky and evil. I don't, I don't think that that's how that works. You think it's like sharks? The sharks have gotten a bad rap because of movies. Yeah. I mean, sharks, yeah, I think sharks are like sharks. That's a great Dory. That's a great analogy. I think sharks are like, well, yeah, if you like, you're coming, if you're going to swim around and look delicious, right. we're going to bite you. Cause we're you sharks. just got in my, you just came into my living room, man. <laughs> Yeah, you're like you're floating up like if, like yeah. If I came to your home, and was floating around the ceiling, they probably want to like poke me or something. something well, and these more the, these murder hornets are just run. They're just flying. <laughs> murder hornets are just trying to find their soulmate. They're like they're a little aggressive. <laughs> they're just socially awkward. They're, they're unattainable people. soulmate. Yeah, they okay. need a little therapy. But yeah, the next... ghosts ghosts are like I think they're good. I think they're all right. 
Okay. The next word is ivy. Ivy. I was hiking yesterday, or not yesterday, but a couple of days, last Saturday. And uh, we don't have poison ivy a lot out in Mission Trails there. There's a lot of poison oak, though. And they, um, they, go, they really go out of their way to make sure that you don't walk through poison oak. Um, but it was weird to go hiking and then, and then remember that like, it was so like, it was so exciting to be out in nature and it wasn't very crowded because there weren't a lot of people that it was like, oh, I need to also pay attention. Like there's things out here that can bite me or make me itch. Like I need to pay attention. I wasn't, I was just so excited to be in sunshine and fresh air that I was like, I didn't realize I was walking through a pile of, of poison oak and it worked out all right. But And please anyway. tell me you do not wear headphones while you're hiking. No, I, no, I don't. Okay. So, sometimes I go in the beginning and listen to like a quick little, um, like a meditation, like a like Tibetan bowls or something, like quiet. Mm, those are nice. But nothing, nothing intrusive. Yeah, and even if you do, like if you really need something, just make sure it's one ear. Oh yeah. All right. Um, Nicole says Nicole Brink says Ivy equals cat. Ivy equals cats. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she's, I think she's probably referring to a cat that she has named Ivy. So ah, very cool. The oh, yeah, next word right. is decorate. Decorate. Um, I don't have. I don't know. I don't have interior decorating skills in my zoo. This is my. I'm in my little Zoom cave here, and I, all I have is that's a white your decoration. Cave. Yeah, I'm really into um, like brutalist kind of like I'm a minimalist kind of thing. Who really drew the heart? Answer. Was that your niece or someone who drew that? I drew that. Oh. Because that, but, but my niece, who's nine, also draws like that because my artistic skills ended. Like that was as far as I developed. Hearts on whiteboards is as far as my drawing ability goes. This is probably why you're the best uncle ever. Right. I keep you know I keep telling people that. <laughs> Okay, so those are the rapid fire words. We're done with that portion of, of the show. And now that I'm going great. to, do you like that? Well, I like Any... that I, I got it halfway into it, which I described, <laughs> but I was taking it like super literal, like the psychotherapy thing. That's the point of being on the spot. Right. Okay, so the next part, there's, I'm going to give you phrases. There's three rapid fire phrases as opposed to a word, and you get to just run with it. Okay, you ready? Run with, just run with the phrase? Yep, do what you want with it. Oh, right. Okay, looking for the best in others. Looking for the best in others is not something that comes naturally to me. I try to do it because it's something that I've heard, like I've heard, I believe in that. It's one of those things that like you hear it and I say that I'd like to do it because it's like, I want to be the, I want to be more, I, I need to do more of that, I guess, is, is the mm. way that I'm, you know what I mean? <clears throat> I don't always, I, like I, my, uh, I have a, I, I have equally a, a, sen a, a sentimental streak and a, and a cynical streak. And so depending on the day, like if I'm feeling overly sentimental and like altruistic, then it, it cut that principle, seeing the best in others comes a little more naturally to me, but it doesn't always, but I'm aware of it. And I, sometimes I'm a little too, um, Cynical. Hmm. I try to okay. do more. Are you ready for the next one? Yeah. Okay. Nothing matters, but everything is important. Nothing matters, but everything is important. Is one of those that sounds like something that sounds like a that sounds like a job interview thing. Like, oh, um, <laughs> tell me what illuminates your motivation you know what i mean it's one of those things i'm like i'm not entirely sure what that means or it's like um i'm a little bit i'm not you know i uh i'm a little bit good at i'm a little bit good at everything i guess wait say it again i like it nothing matters but everything is important well i can't tell if i'm annoyed by that or if it's like super zen. <laughs> it's either like it's it's either like it's like oh man that, that that's gonna go on the whiteboard or it's like, I like that's a, that goes back to the I'm equally s cynical and like sentimental. Like I wanna I wanna see the beauty in that. You know what I mean? Like there's probably truth in it. Nothing matters, but everything. You know, I I get it. All right, I like All right. it. I like it. You hate it. <laughs> These are great. Okay, ready? 
follow yeah. your dreams. All your dreams. Yeah, I think you should write down your dreams and try to achieve your goals. I was um, a long time ago when I lived in Los Angeles. I had a, a uh, I was on a film set of, of a, a crime show, a TV show, and um, we were filming a scene where the the two detectives who were played by LL Cool J and um, Chris O'Donnell. It was it was one of the NCIS TV shows. And we were, it was hot. We were in the hills of, hills of uh, uh, Santa Clarita up north, like north of Los Angeles. And the scene was the two detectives had come upon a, a, a dead body that had been half, like half buried, like it was a, a murder victim. And it was semi decomposed. And so it was this skeleton that the art, you know, the, uh, that the art department had created. And it was incredibly realistic. And so all of the extras and everybody were standing around and we were getting the camera set up and we were getting ready to shoot it. And it was it was a really realistic decomposed skeleton, like flesh hanging off it and stuff. And LL Cool J walked up, and it was it was time for him to take his place. And we were about to start filming, and he was like, he was very struck by it. He was like, "Whoa!" And he kind of looked at everybody. He's like, "Wow, um, write down your goals, everybody. Achieve your dreams." <laughs> mm. I'm like, "Whoa!" That was it was this weird kind of uh, weird bit of wisdom from LL Cool J playing a detective on a tele on a not a very good television show in my yeah. opinion and uh and we were all staring into a into a shallow grave and so we all took a moment and we're at all we're like yeah we should all write down our goals and achieve our dreams write down your goals and achieve your dreams follow your dreams says LL Cool J it kind of reminds me it kind of reminds me of like the it's uh, it's not an original but it's like the biggest lie I could tell myself was to not that I have to write something down and I'll like forget. And I, it makes sense to write them down. Okay, oh, yeah. so these, these next five questions I'm calling the Dory Five. Okay. Dory Five. The Dory Five. <laughs> Who is your biggest creative influence? My biggest creative influence um, is probably right off the top of my, I'm just gonna go with the top, what comes to me off the top of my head. Um, uh, the author Terry Pratchett, who's who's now deceased, but he was a he wrote he's best known for the work, the book that he wrote with Neil Gaiman. Neil Gaiman wrote um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. They co-wrote a book together, which is um, oddly uh, it, it, it's worth reading again, especially given these pandemic times. They wrote a book called Good Omens. Terry Pratchett was a uh, is a fantasy author, but is a satirist, and I um, so in terms of authorship like authors and writers that's probably my biggest creative influence because he was both an author but also uh he, he was he's extremely funny he's a very dry wit yeah and i i see i see original screenplay oscars in your future as far as i'm concerned so oscars well original screenplay i really don't care what the award ceremony is but like you're going to get an award for your writing i i at some point um oh, that's okay really nice. that's thank you that's really you're nice. welcome do you find who? Oh wait, what the hell? Oh, <laughs> this is great. Do you find you need a muse to bring out your creative side? It depends on the creative side. If there's anything that I'm doing that's comedic in nature, um, absolutely. But that's the that's the the way that that's the type of comedy that I have the most experience in is is improvisational and sketch comedy. So I went to the in Los Angeles, the Second City, the Second City Improvisational Theater, which is originally based out of Chicago. That's where I did most of my writing and performing comedically, and okay. that's the, the the collaborative process is the essence of the way that they write. And so, th and that's just the nature of, of improv comedy and stuff like that. Um, so if it's comedic, like the fun little video that we did, the parody song of the of the. Yellow Submarine, my friend Jess. There's, the, I couldn't have, I wrote that, but she's the musical talent. And then like, in terms of the, more importantly, when something is produced or done creatively in a comedic sense, the, the third party, the objective opinion, the editing of another, I think is crucial for me anyway. So in terms of a muse, a jumping off point, someone to go like, that's terrible. Or this is where it is. <laughs> the, there's a give and take in that type of sense. So like 
if it's comedic, yeah, but if it's photography or if it's something written, um, I don't necessarily need that, but I see it's, it's, you, you can't always shoot like a muse isn't something you can seek out. You either find it or, you know, mm -hmm. if you want to get cosmic about it, it finds you the, the muse. Oh, um, that's not the truth. Well, that kind of, you know, it's funny. You didn't even know the next part or the second segue of the question is, if so, who and what? And you actually answered that, which is rad. And I love what you said about it being dependent upon what medium you're talking about, because I'm the same way. It, it's very different what I may need creatively if I'm going to do comedy as opposed to writing a poem. Um, yes, yeah, some, some things are incredibly, are, are incredibly internal. I think photography as a medium lends itself to that. Like it, mm -hmm. it, it originates. So, but I thought like you're, you see something or you, or in the framing of a certain object or a certain landscape, like, you know, photography is that type of medium, but there's other types of mediums where the editing process is incredibly crucial. Like in comedy, when like things need to be pared down and like, like being like brevity doesn't come naturally to me. So I don't always have an economy of words, but, mm. the, but the outside like creative input of another with of, of a like-minded sensibility is um invaluable but you can't it's hard to seek out it's it's not usually like that like those muses tend to find you i love that thank you okay so what role do you feel as an artist you play in the lives of others oh man <laughs> these are well thought out questions these are the Dory Five. It's Dory Five. Let's take a drink together. Yeah, yeah, like it's a great way to buy some time. Oh, I just. I, <laughs> He's all. I need a drink of coffee right now. Is that Betty Boop? What's on your mug? This is a Detroit D. I got this oh, in Detroit. Okay. Nice. Okay, so what role do you feel as an artist you play in the lives of others? I think that if um. If anybody like, I I think so. I, I um, yeah, that's a good question. I think that my my perspective, everyone's perspective is unique to them, and if somebody has an artistic sensibility or a need for expression, they have to be totally true to themselves. And I think that um, somebody purely expressing their artistic whatever it is, if it's photography, if it's art, if it's comedy, if it's writing, like if someone's being truly authentic in whatever they feel that they need to express on whatever medium they need to express it, that helps others to achieve authenticity in their life. That's what I, that's what I think. I I'm gonna to, like, I okay, so we're at the, I gotta remember this was at the 22 minute mark because I just adore everything about what you just said. And I know yeah, you know what, I know you know me well enough to know what I mean when I say that, when you talk about authenticity, oh yeah. <laughs> Well, and authenticity is not something that ever, like, that I ever used to care about, let alone try to speak out. Like, I, you know, through like, through the rooms of addiction recovery, you know, and, and, and that's my personal journey. Like, I've, I've found a different, uh, a, you know, I was, I found a different life. And so, like, one of the things that I've learned in, in the rooms of 12 step recovery programs, of which I'm a member of many <laughs> but like any like that's just like my that's been my mental health journey if i could classify it like that is that the lack of authenticity the lack of which is just another way of saying honesty in a certain sense like right. and so um so for years like whatever i created whatever i was trying to create like whatever place i was trying to get creatively i could probably i could get there i could get close to it but it was never really satisfying because it was never really authentic because i wasn't being, I wasn't seeking authenticity in my life. So how in the world could I have, like, how would I be able to help inspire someone else to find out authenticity in theirs? And so as, as I've found a lifestyle that is rooted in authenticity, or at least in theory should be, you know, there's, there's plenty of times where I get that wrong, but if that's where I start, then anything that's done or created or any type of like interaction or creation from that point is going to be authentic and help others to be authentic as well. Nice. Love it. Okay. What a great, what a good question. Um, you know. <laughs> Wait, let me practice a little humility here. Okay. Do you have any routine or practice for staying or getting into a creative space? 
Yeah, I get really depressed. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get into a lot of pain, like, and I and I don't and I don't I, I don't seek that, like I don't I, not not I'm not trying to not in like a existential like only art can come from pain kind of way. That's just the nature of like when I need an outlet, like I I have to get to that place first. Like something something inside of me needs to get out, and then I and if I if I you know, I spend a considerable amount of my time avoiding that. There, some might call that procrastination. You know what I mean, mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. it is. But like, I do. Um, it's sort of there's a great. Well, I'm going to get it wrong now that I brought it up. But there's a quote from J.D. Salinger where, like, J.D. Salinger, the great author, hated writing. He hated it because it, it required so much of him. But he but he couldn't huh. avoid it. And so he was like, he, he, there's some quote about him being dr kick, dragged, kicking and screaming to every page. Like, and it's a, it's a little bit like that. Like not to be, not to be all, um, holding coffee about it, but like that. <laughs> I'm sorry. There has, you would a, think, there has to be a need. But I, the, you would think that that would not make me laugh, but I totally relate to so much of that. And it's, it, it goes to show how, Writers, I can't speak for the other mediums right now, but I definitely know 100% without fail, the majority of the time, what is going to bring out one of the biggest, what I consider coolest poems of my career, my world, are the ones that came from some serious pain. Um, I've recently been reading, yeah, I think you're, I think you're, um, I agree with that statement. And I think that, like, I just recently was, and I haven't ever really read Virginia Woolf before, but I've been learning about the life of Virginia Woolf. Good stuff. And she um, famously battled with um, with what we would now classify as maybe bipolar disorder, but some really mm -hmm. severe depression. I mean, she, and she ended her life. Like, she, she mm -hmm. made the decision. So did Ernest Hemingway. Like Same thing. Ernest Hemingway was, was, he suffered from depression and he was an alcoholic. Yeah, and it took a while yeah. for us to get around to appreciating Virginia Woolf. Ernest Hemingway was a hero, is a hero still. But it's interesting how sometimes we discount female writers because of the, because of the like or 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 writers specifically that deal with mental health issues. Anyway, she would, she would after she would write something and it was finally completed, she would she would really bottom out in a, in a very severe way. But the the the, huh. the swings, the the big emotional swings, sometimes can be a lot. But that's where sometimes that's where it has to come from. We're gonna get together and have a really long discussion about this because you made me just think of some Anne Rice stuff and I got yeah. Okay, last story five. Ready? What is yeah, the so one? Five more? No, this is the last of the five. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> this is number five. Okay. Yeah. What is the one thing about your craft, a piece, a performance, or, or other artistic something, whatever, that truly terrified you? Um, so most of my writing experience comes from the training that I got um, at, the, at the Second City Theater in Los Angeles. And that's, uh, that's uh, the core of what they do there is they use improvisation, group comedic improvisation as, as a writing tool. So it makes it purely collaborative. Um, improvisation, like you you hit the stage and whether it's, you know, it can be comedic or dramatic, but um, usually it, it lends itself to comedy because you, you're coming up with stuff on the spot and and it's, um, it, it's, it's funny. <clears throat> um, but that's terrifying. Like you're, you're, you're going on, and in the long form, especially you're, um, doing i mean it's like a 30 or 45 minute or an hour play based off of a one word suggestion and then you just start and make it up as you go and you have scenes and you have edits and you, you're just like literally doing the dialogue on the spot and so there's a there's something about there's something about suffering together that you know what i mean it's kind of like <laughs> suffering together creates a creates a, a need for an immediate bond and then um but it's terrifying it's always terrifying but so like that coming coming to comedy like that in writing, um, that's like I know I'm close to writing something meaningful if I'm terrified by it. So I'm in I'm terror. But then the terror leaves. Like I don't I'm not living in constant terror. <laughs> but like, I love that. It's like you know it's like the quote, you know, do something every once a day that scares you kind of thing. 
like right. that gets overquoted, but it's really true. It's like that. It's like if it's scary. So in so in improvisation, one of the one of the you know the great founders of, of the of improv was Del Close, and he said if you're doing if you're if it feels weird, do more of it. If, mm. it, if it feels not if it feels wrong, if it feels weird, meaning weird. if it feels uncomfortable, you should probably do more of it because that's oh. where the most. That's where the most interesting. I just is. got uncomfortable hearing that. Thinking about like I have there's, I know there's we have a few people I know that are tuned in that are writers and what you just said. Oh my god! It just made me like get scared. Okay, so those yeah, are the story scary. fives. So I just put a comment in. Um, I just put a comment on the feed so that people can start asking and posting questions for you. So they can we can take some questions from whomever may be watching. Um, while we're waiting for questions to pop up, I'm going to go through 10 questions. I'm not going to say who they're from because I don't want to violate any copyright rules. Um, but here we go. What is your favorite word? My favorite word. My favorite word is jazzercise. Jazzercise? <laughs> That's just the first one that came Are you afraid me. of the word or doing the jazzercise? Uh I miss jazzercise. I, I, I'm fascinated by, I'm always fascinated by workout trends and, or fads, I should say. Jazzercise is just kind of a, it's a fun word to say. Jazzercise. Like, so we have, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, like try saying jazzercise. Like if you're in a bad mood, say jazzercise five times in a row and try, like you can't maintain being in a bad mood and saying jazzercise at the same time. You mean it's going to mess up me being on my pity pot? <laughs> it'll, it'll totally ruin that. Ah. Oh. Okay, so we have a question from the from our from our floor from Michelle. This is my sis, all the way from uh, Louisiana, Kendall, and oh, she really? wants mm -hmm, she wants to know how do you get past the personal fears that seem to paralyze you from writing or putting it on paper? Oh, you must be sisters because that's also a good question. <laughs> what is it with the? Um... She's a writer as well. Yeah, the thing about writing is that like you have like I had I had the the I'm always in fear of not being accepted. Like I, I like mm. if I, and, and if I'm writing something purely for acceptance to be accepted or to be or that means I'm too attached to the outcome. So as soon as I remove myself from whatever the out whatever I think the outcome is going to be, then I'm at least a little bit closer to like like usually if I find that I'm I have some fears or there's something that I'm afraid to write about, it's because I'm too attached to the what I think my expectation of what the outcome is going to be, meaning mm. everyone's going to love this, or I hope everyone loves this, or everyone's probably going to disagree with this. No one's going to like this. No one's going to, everyone's going to hate this. Like whatever it is, that means I have no idea what the outcome is going to be. And there's a bunch of stuff that I write that never sees the light of day. Like that's what a journal is. And the certain, like it, there's just stuff I can put down and it's just for me and it's out there and no one ever has to see it. And if, if something is, being written for i mean some of the great english writers like what uh dorothy wordsworth she all of her stuff was, was published posthumously because she wrote mostly in journals and they were never necessarily intended for public consumption but she wrote it she wrote it down anyway like that's the importance of journaling like you've got to get it out so if there is something that like writing down the fears is a big way to do it like what am i afraid of like and why am i afraid to write just for me no one is going to see this like once right. i started writing that stuff down going as silly as it might be or as big as it might be like put it down on paper let it let it live in a notebook so it's not in your head anymore bugging you i love when you said the thing about expectations and and i know for me when i when i start a new art piece i have to go into it and and tell myself there are no rules here, Dory. And because I'll get hung up on that. I'll get hung up on what it's supposed to be. And and I love what you just said. So Elena wants to know how long you've been doing improv. I've done improv for, let's see, since, well, since high school. I graduated high school in 1995. That's when I first started doing improv, like short form comedy, like whose line is it anyway style, you know, short form yeah. games. And then I lived in Los Angeles from 2009 to 2015 or so, um, and I was at the I was at the second I went through the Second City program, uh, their their concert their conservatory, and then their long form improv. And so so probably a little over ten years. 
Okay. And then uh, Crescent wants to know, have you always wanted to be a writer? And when did you know? I have, I've always known and I haven't always, my, my answer is both. I've always known, but I haven't always wanted to be. And mm -hmm. I think that some, and I think that sometimes the, our creative expression finds us and it's not what we would necessarily choose. And we don't get, a, we don't get any say in it. Like I knew when I was in third grade, when I wrote, a, I wrote, a, I wrote a story um, about a haunted house that could speak. And I won like a jar of pennies. Like there was a jar of like $3 in pennies. Mm -hmm. So I've known, since, or it might've been the second grade. No, no, no. It was the third grade because it was Mr. Helmo. So I've known since the, um, nope, it was the second grade, Mrs. Workman. I've known since the second grade. But I love how you distinguish that you knew, but you didn't necessarily want to. I love that. Yeah, I don't, I don't often want to. And then Elena just wanted to know, where did you get started with it? Your writing, the writing part? I guess that may, what you just said may have answered that, but... My writing is like as a as what I could probably classify as some kind of profession. So I'm by profession, I'm a copywriter, um, and right now that provides a shockingly moderate living. Just in case anyone's <laughs> wondering. But in terms of being creative, like and and getting like making a living out of one's creative profession, so I'm a copywriter, and I've done that since. Um, and that that came from a marketing background, um, okay. and that came from not really having any direct not having a lot of direction in life in my twenties and have, having to do something to, to try to justify my existence in, in the, as a productive member of society. So that I, I started writing for small production companies in Los Angeles that, that produced commercials and um, some live television shows like the SB awards. I wrote some stuff for the SB awards back when they were still being produced. So uh, that would That's have amazing. been 2000. 12. That's when I started doing that as a professional. So your favorite word was jazzercise. What's your least favorite word? This is very James Lipton of you. I like it. Um, <laughs> this is how you know you're a good interviewer. You're channeling some James Lipton here. Um, my least favorite word is my least favorite word is um Anything with too many consonants, if it has too many consonants, uh, I'm suspicious of it. <laughs> Moisture is uncomfortable. Moisture. Yeah, that's kind of an infamous word for being people's least favorite word. Um, yeah. So Crescent wants to know, do you have a favorite character that you created and describe them to us? Oh, that's a great question. Um, so I haven't written anything in terms of in like a like a literary like a novel or anything where like characters are created. Um, all of the characters that end up like most of the stuff that I write comedically, like the characters are loosely based on. Um, they're kind of like aggregate characters from people in my life or some aspect of my personality. Like and so any like some of the acting that I've done, like the only acting that I'm truly like comfortable doing. Or the or the method of acting that I like, not that I've acted very much, but like, it's a real naturalistic kind of thing. So any character that gets created is like some aspect of like my personality. I, I think that's the most like we get back to authenticity. Um, I haven't Good written anything recently that has characters in it, like character and dialogue, other than like sketch comedy. And mm -hmm. it's either it's either some it's either a little it's either some version of me or it's something completely opposite, some completely nonsense character. But that goes back to like sketch comedy and improv. Like that's all that, that's where that comes from. Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't you write the sketch comedy that was Star Trek related? Yeah, so in the, um, so for the big regional AA convention, I'm a member of Alcoholics Anonymous. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say that. Anyway, 12 step recovery, whatever. There was this- Speak with you on that one, you know. Is this, is this at the level of press radio internet? And it, anyway, there's a big there's a big twelve step recovery convention once a year where we have a big talent show, and so like we wrote this um we wrote this comedy sketch based on um it's Star Trek, and I got the idea from there's a great Carol Burnett sketch from a long time ago from the Carol Burnett show where mm -hmm. her and all of the female characters play all of the um play all the main characters on the classic Star Trek. I mean, Kirk and Spock and McCoy and Scotty and all those guys. 
and there's of course Uhura, but like it was it was genius. And so we wrote a um, I wrote a parody really sketch of that, and it's like a, a person like a, like Dr. McCoy is the is is Kirk's sponsor in in mm -hmm. twelve step recovery. You know what I mean? And and then it goes it get, it gets crazier from there. It's almost like just heinous that it's not a, available for me to go find somewhere to watch it because it was to die for. <laughs> like I, you know, I, I have a long standing personal, like I have a lot of history with the whole spring roundup, but we don't need to go there. But that was like a moment where I was sitting there and I remember distinctly remember saying, thank you God for making sure my ass was in the seat. <laughs> Excuse my my. I use a profane word. Oh my god. Okay. So the one, so the one, the one Star Trek one that you saw was a couple of years ago, yes. and um, somebody, it's we wrote that, and we like I didn't have I didn't have anywhere really funny to go with it, and somebody said, oh, you, like it, I kind of wrote it out of spite because somebody said, oh, you should put a joke in there about Uranus. You should make a Uranus joke, and I said, oh, okay, is that what we're gonna do? So then that particular <laughs> sketch relies heavily on the device of the Uranus joke. But what, what makes it funny is that everyone's in on the joke except Kirk. So they, the joke is it's I remember funny that. now, but it's like, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it was just a lot of Uranus jokes. But, but I'm, <laughs> a big fan of, I'm a big fan of things in comedy where you take so, like something's funny and it's funny and it's funny and then, it, and then you, you keep going and it stops being funny. It's the Dave Letterman circle of comedy. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes super unfunny, but you keep going and then it becomes really funny again. That, that sort of was where that came from. Okay, so um, what turns you on? Intellect. Okay, intellect. What turns you off? Oh, what? Oh. You wanted to add to that? <laughs> I was going to say in good hygiene, but well, uh, bad hygiene is the, I'll say that for the bad, for which reason. Well, you know, you, your chances of getting someone with good hygiene after this whole COVID thing is probably a good, that's a good, you know, I'm hoping that people's hygiene has improved now. <laughs> Because everyone's going to be so sterile. That's what I'm thinking. I'm guessing. You know, I'm I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah, face masks. Right. Um, yeah, but I hope. Yeah, but don't just because we can wear face masks now doesn't mean that we can ignore our dental hygiene. Like just because this is covered up, you know what I mean? Yes. And I yeah. and I'm. Uh, what turns you off? Yeah, bad hygiene. That oh oh I'm sorry. Wait, I'm sorry. Can I have another answer for that? Can I have another yes, answer? Of course. You're on the spot. I don't like lack of social like there's there's some been some things recently like I don't like kind of like snarky snarkiness snarky self entitled like lack of self like um, lack of social awareness. Like there's a there's a small subsection of people right now and I've been on social media way too much so I have opinions about it. But like the people that are aggressively like that, that we, we, some people collectively have decided they're just over like all oh, the face mask thing. Like, Oh, we're just ready for the country to be open again, just because they want it to be like that right. kind of like lack of, I guess it's narcissism on some level, but it's so, it's not even like aggressive. I would rather deal with like an aggressive narcissism because at least that's a choice. This is like a lack of a choice. It's so boring. And it's such, it's just like so gross. Like just wear the stupid mask and do the thing. And like, don't go to the store as much. You idiots. Like how hard is it? Like all this like snarkiness, I don't I don't like that. Like oh, it's okay. Yeah, it's I love. Of this. I well, yeah. You know, I I totally can relate to what you're talking about. I kind of I know uh, this isn't about me, so I'll leave my own personal opinion aside. But I definitely can relate to that, and and not even just about the whole situation right now with the world we're in, just in general. That in snarky, cocky, entitled, I can't. I just can't. <laughs> okay. Um, real quick, I'm gonna. So, how do you handle writer's block? Crescent wants to know. Um, well, I first aggressively procrastinate until I'm extremely uncomfortable, and then, um, and then, but then what I do is once I do sit down and put and put pen to paper, is I, I do the uh, and I got this method from are you familiar with the book The Artist? I think I have it right here. Do you know this book, Dory? I do, actually. It's in my storage unit. 
And I, okay, I don't so, I don't think I've ever actually utilized it like I probably could. So yeah, I haven't like done the whole thing, but the one method that this woman, Julia Cameron, talks about in terms of overcoming writer's block, and I do it, I do it every day now. And this works both creatively and personal stuff like journal writing, like just writing hardcore stream of consciousness, Ulysses mm -hmm. style, just write it. Like if a, if a thought comes, write it down. Yep. Even if it's nonsense, it might even just be one word over and over again. Write, keep writing until, until direction comes, until thoughts come. And I've applied that to not just creative, but to like anything like, um, uh, to personal letters that maybe I'm mailing to a family member, to journal writing especially. Like, just I'm gonna start writing words, even even if it's nonsense or whatever it is, because that's it's oh it's um this is gonna sound corny, but whatever. It's like it's literally unclogging. It's unclogging. Yep. So all of that time spent, all of that input taken in, all that time spent on social media, watching TV, and all that stuff, all that information, that's all that's all in there. And that's clogging, that's clogging stuff up. So whatever it is that we channel when we write creatively, like that needs to get cleared out. It's yep. it. You're literally plunging. It's, you're, it's, a, it's a plunger. You're plunging it. You're, it's the drain of, you know, just, just write until it starts to make sense. It's kind of like a chaos theory kind of thing. I like it. It was the first assignment that um, Michael Xavier gave me when we talked about the writer's workshop was I had to carry a notebook and pen everywhere. Anywhere and everywhere, yeah. and 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 I had to get into the habit and practice of writing it down, whatever it was, whether it was a phrase, whether it was a book idea, a story idea, a poem, it didn't matter, and um, and just uh, so the other thing I was gonna say about the only other thing I know, and I know this is you're on the spot, but the other thing for me when it comes to what you would think of as writer's block, I have to shift gears, and what's cool, and I and I, you have many streams or many different mediums for your for your creative creative side, being a comic and a writer and the the all that stuff. I switch gears to I'll go from my poetry to write something else, or I'll do an art piece, or I'll sketch. I I know for me that when I come back to the other medium, medium, um, I have a, a blank brain and I can I can get back to it. Yeah. Um, exactly. So what's what sound or noise do you love? That I love? I love the Did sound of, um, of getting a bunch of uh, bubble wrap. You know, like little packing, bubble packing, bubble wrap? Yeah. I love what that. sound or noise do you hate? I, I don't like the sound. I don't like the sound of my mother crying. I don't like the sound of anybody crying. Crying makes me incredibly uncomfortable. But family members, like, ooh. You know what I mean? Crescent, cre or not Crescent, sorry. Candace asks, so you hate me? <laughs> it's Are not a question. It's not a question, but she commented earlier when you were talking about uh, the hey, face. Candace, talk. I didn't say, I, I didn't say the sound of whining. That's a different sound. Oh, no, this was earlier. This was oh. earlier. We were on wait, another wait, wait. question. What was the question? It was related to when you were talking about uh, what turns you off being um, entitlement and that that thing about the public and what the, some of the, I don't know. Oh. I'm not. Yeah. No, I don't. She no, said I don't it was, oh, snarky. Okay. She clarified. She said it's about, you were talking about snarky. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't hate that. That just turns me off. Okay. So you don't think Candace is snarky? <laughs> I think Candace tries to be snarky. Oh, okay. All her right. Her hair is snarky. Her hair is fantastic. Hair. I almost used the F word, but I kept myself from it. Her, it, okay. it, 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 I, it, it really is. I'm being. And it's funny I'm because the next question is what is your favorite curse word? My favorite curse word is the bastard. Favorite. Really? Yeah. Okay. Because it's, like, like, it's like. It's it, it can it's almost like it can be a term of endearment or it can it can really be like uh, those those freaking bastards those bastards. <laughs> I, 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 do I don't know why I, do I just I think it like that wasn't what I was expecting. It was pretty unique. It's that's, that's pretty cool. Um, I've been saying it a lot lately in terms of the government. Those uh, uh, bloody. I've been watching a few uh, TV shows that are English and I keep going bloody how. <laughs> I'm not English. Okay, what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? 
lumberjack. I want to live in the woods and clear brush and cut down trees. Oh, I love that. That's rad. Okay. What profession would you not like? I would never want to be, um, I would never want to be a, 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 a um, not a middle school or a high school, but a, a, a college teacher at the community college level. That seems incredibly frustrating. I have some, I go to community college right now, San Diego City College, go Knights. No one knows that that's their mascot, but I do. Um, they have tremendous professors there, but they are constantly frustrated because of the level of, because of just what they deal with in terms of bureaucracy, administration, and things like that. I would find that like insufferable. Okay. Um, let's see. I don't see another question. How can These you are great that? questions. Oh my God. Wait. Candace wants to know, how can you hate the sound of crying when that's what you do? I do cry a lot. I weep a lot. Maybe that's why I hate it. Ooh, there's some, ooh, there's some depth there. That was kind of deep. This, is this therapy? This might be. <laughs> this yeah, all therapy. the girls came out to help you with your therapy today. <laughs> oh, I love it. You tricked me into therapy. So, um, so then the next, the last 10, the 10th question, and we've gone through some in our, our comments is, if heaven does exist, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Welcome home. Mm. You're home. Welcome home. I love that. I think it's um, Maureen. Oh, you know what? Oh, oh, do you want to change sorry, your answer? What, change your no, answer. No, what were you going to say? Oh, Maureen O'Hara said that she believes when we get to heaven, they're going to ask us how was heaven. Oh, <laughs> it's a like it's a take. A, I, it's either her or it might it might be. Um, oh God, I think it's her quote. I might be wrong about whose quote it is, but it's a take on how we're supposed to appreciate the world here, right here, where we are right now. Oh, I like that. That's a oh. real. That's a purely like I like that philosophy. That's a really. That's what the not. That's what agnostics used to be like. That's original Gnostic thought used to be that that Armageddon wasn't something that was coming and the kingdom of heaven wasn't something to be attained or some physical place. Like it's already here and it's already inside of us. Divine spark kind of thing. I like that. Okay. So we've got eight minutes left and I'm going to fill it with giving you those words again. The oh, ones, the first, in the, ones? the first ones. Ready? Oh, this is good. Redemption. Redemption. Okay. Br bring it on, Mr. Witty comic man otter pops brain freeze i could never eat just one of those i, I would and they're so small like they're designed to like give people brain freeze like you can't like i would i um would eat them a lot of them and i would i was good brain freeze kiss awkward i'm sticking with that answer <laughs> kiss, kiss you're sticking with that answer, answer. Kissing and hugging are awkward things. I have intimacy issues. We don't need to get into it. But that's just like, I have a, I have spatial stuff that I'm working through. I'm working through one 12-step program at a time here. Jeez, this is therapy. <laughs> well, it's hysterical because you just brought to mind the fact for me that kiss doesn't make me think awkward. But the hug thing? Oh, you know, you know, personal. <laughs> Isn't it Somebody crazy that I would rather kiss someone than hug them? Somebody once told me that they hug like I'm trying to escape. <laughs> I can relate. Uh, cowboy. Cowboy is. Um, I think of. Uh, I think of. Uh, I think of like my. I think of Johnny Cash, and that makes me think of my grandpa, who was like. A, and my. Yeah, I have a couple members of my family that are real cowboys, like they're out there on the farm. In fact, I might go like. I kind of want to move. Go, getting back to the lumberjack thing, I kind of want to go live on a farm. You know what I mean? I'm kind of done with this whole like civilization thing. <sighs> I want to there go be a cowboy. That's what I want to do. I want to be a lumberjack cowboy astronaut. <laughs> you can come up and I'll drive you around some places in Ramona and drop you off. <laughs> yeah, Ramona. They got they got cowboys in Ramona. All like, kinds of Ramona. all kinds. Um, origami. Origami is incredibly intricate and difficult. Um, and I uh, I'm in awe of things like that. So so if we're talking about artists 
like artist stuff like that's like there's certain types of art like i was making jokes earlier about my lack of drawing ability right so i'm i'm impressed with origami in the same way that i'm impressed with like architecture in the same way that i'm impressed with um uh art of any kind like like paintings like intricate like oil paintings and stuff like that um because i don't what have are you that talking ability. about <laughs> what's that i'm like which painter are you talking about <laughs> oh yeah anyone that can paint that's an amazing that's an amazing talent and skill set like i don't have that in the same way that i don't have math well the the big reveal the big secret is is that every single person has that skill really the only adults who can't paint a masterpiece are the adults that stopped coloring Ooh. That's a this Dory. Is, that's a Dory is, original. No, seriously. Is no, I, I didn't. Nobody created that quote for me. That's totally me. Okay. No, uh, yoga. Um, inflexible. I'm not flexible. I, I'm. I'm. In fact, during this, um, I've been doing a lot of stupid workout challenges because I, you know, I can't like say no to a workout challenge. So if I get tagged in something, like I have to do it, but then I get obsessed with it. And so I'm not very flexible. I just recently was able to touch my toes. That's new. So that's been exciting. Um, write down your goals and shoot your dreams. Did you write that one down? <laughs> I did, I, yeah, I did, I did now. I need to know how to touch my toes. Okay, um, we'll skip middle name because we know it's Curtis. Good. Unless you. Uh, cannabis. Cannabis is, um, it's interesting. It's interesting. It, my first answer was legal, but like cannabis is, um, I don't have a lot of experience with cannabis. Um, I do have some cream with like CBD oil, but that's not cannabis. That's, um, that's right. a non, that's non psychoactive and it is great for inflammation, but I, I don't have a ton. The one, like one experience I have with cannabis, uh, many years ago was, um, I thought my I thought my chest was caving in, and it wasn't positive. Okay, so I'm gonna um, end. I'm gonna stop at soulmate. Soulmate. I mean, yeah, like we we're that's what like, that's what we're that's what we all want, right? We're all like trying to find the soulmate. I don't think there's just one. You know, although part of me wants to say that there is just the one, because sometimes it does feel like there's just the one. There's the one that got away. There's the one that we haven't found yet. And maybe there is. Maybe. I don't know. The universe is a big place. Um, I don't believe I've found mine yet. Or maybe I've found all of them and everyone's a soulmate on some level. Um, <laughs> I love the eye roll at the end. Okay, so um, we are wrapping it up. You've got three minutes. That's all to yours. You can oh, tell your – just close it out and tell us goodbye and end my on that. Yeah, this, got my it. instinct was going to be like, I'm like what, if, what, what if I just stared at the camera for three minutes? For three <laughs> – you know, there's a lot of us that would be that. fine with spending three minutes but looking I, at you on a screen. But I really appreciate, like, first of all, being asked, like, this is cool. And this, the platform is amazing. I didn't know about the platform. And, and I really like, have, um, Dory, I'm grateful that, like, you're embracing, like, like you, you, that you thought to do this and you put it together and, um, and put thought into those questions. Like, those are amazing questions. I think that this is, like, um, Can you tell really them a writer, cool. too? Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. I might be, um, I might be a writer, too. I might be. I'm a writer too. I think that it's cool that like people have had like, the, if, if anything, the age of pandemia is like people are like having ideas and doing them, and and there's not a lot of barrier to entry. And I yes. don't just mean barrier to entry in terms of like the platform or money or anything like that. But like we don't need to worry about the uh, the end result. Like it can just be a camera and our face and 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 or whatever it is. It doesn't yep. take a ton of production value. It doesn't take any production value. If somebody wants to do something and write something and put it put it out for public consumption, regardless of what the intent is, like there's a lot of that happening. And the things that we thought were were obstacles don't literally don't exist. Perception is everything. It's also nothing. I love that. Thank you. That that <laughs> that is a way, a wonderful way to you know because I I hope that writers and artists and comedians or anyone who finds our video and finds the, those words of wisdom that you just shared is hears them because um, I know for me that 
whatever's in here between my ears is is pretty much nothing until I do something with it. Um, and so for me, you know, and you said it, and you touched on it earlier. Um, the um, the thing of just simply the fact of getting it down, getting it out, and and not putting any putting. I've had to learn that the hard way to not put any rules on it, not have any expectations, to leave the result out of it, to get it done, and even and and not even care, you know, like and and I okay, so I, I will tell you, Kendall, I really, really, really am so so honored and so grateful that you agreed to do this and agreed to be on the spot today with Doris Jones' Labors of Love because the entire world in my opinion, that's artistic, is a labor of love. It's it's love from one to another. And if I had to say there's any kind of soulmate, it's the artists of the world, the artists of the world. Because I know, I can't speak for you, but I know for me that if I share anything creative, it's coming from my heart to yours. And then we're connected in a soul love. So I'm good. I'm good with that. Wow. I'm good. You know? I like yeah. And I appreciate this because as you and I talked before, there, you know, part of why I got the platform together is for some other, other, um, you know, speaking of our fellowship, some other uh, things to do with the people, with the peoples, as well as my art and poetry and all that stuff. And so I couldn't think of anyone better to be the inaugural guest of the on the spot with my, with my art world, because I, I just, oh, yeah. I keep, yeah. You were my first choice and I'm so grateful. And I didn't, the only other question, the only other question that I, I saw come up was Candace wants to know, since kissing makes you awkward, feel awkward, does that mean we should um, kiss you instead of hug? What was the question now? I looked, you should absolutely not do that. <laughs> there's, oh, there's some real benefits to the world of does Zoom. It, and, and does being that mean like we it. should be kissing Kendall when we see him not hugging? No. That. See, I I had to go back to her question because we are called on the spot, and that is a pretty on the spot inquiry. So, and one last thing, and I'll let you go to you when you said your turn on was intellect. What does intellect mean for you? I guess it goes back to like not to be heavy handed with this, but like it goes back to authenticity. Like it's not necessarily like being having achieved a certain IQ or naturally having a certain IQ, like it's not this intellect is, um, I probably mean like more emotional intellect, but but being true to oneself. Like it's not, like we, like we intellect can be confusing sometimes. Like it's not about being smart. That's not what it is. But like if, if, if there were, it was a theme from this, and I don't know if that's what we were trying to achieve, but authenticity, if, if someone's being truly authentic to themselves first, and then to the, and then to the people in a wor the world around them, I don't, I don't see any, higher purpose than that and that's um that's probably what i mean when i say intellect all right i'm not that bright myself so i'm not you know what i mean it's not about being like smart although that you know read some books like it's not that hard but like um it's, it's kind of what i mean yeah michelle michelle commented integrity being a way to describe Ooh. yeah the word integrity yeah right yeah that's good that's good yeah well, we love you. I love you. I'm so grateful you came on today. And uh, unless you have anything else, you are off the spot. Man, what a great You're off the awesome. spot. I I really was unprepared for that. That was great. And now I I didn't announce this. I didn't say this. But now that you're off the spot, you get to ask me one question and put me on the spot. <clears throat> the what one question. You, what scares okay. you the most about this? About this yeah um or if anything maybe nothing does maybe this doesn't scare you at all but do you have actually, any words no i i actually have the answer to this the, what scared me the most about this was people who were watching and 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 it, it's funny because you actually know this answer i got a little bit of a moment of panic today that as people were watching and commenting and asking you questions that i was going to miss it because I'm, I'm interviewing you, right? And so I, as you know, we have a technical co-host who's in the background right now, and she's been fabulous. She's been sending me private chats and she's been letting me know if I missed anything. And, and the good news is, is I, I didn't. There was one question she reminded me to go back and look at, which was great, which is fantastic, which is exactly what scared me the most about this was because 
I know for me, I personally, and, and, and I'm not perfect at it, but I don't like ignoring people and I don't like anyone to feel invalidated or unworthy or not heard or not noticed or not, you know what I'm saying? Like I was an abandoned yeah. foster kid. Nobody loved me kind of girl. So yeah. I do, yeah. I do try to take a diligent effort in my life to show other people I'm listening. And so that was what scared me the most about this whole thing today was that you and I were going to miss something someone wanted to ask you. And so I, I got, I, I reached out and I found someone who was willing to be of service and, and benevolent, benevolently came on here and, and has worked behind the scenes for us today, which is rad. That's really cool. This is really That's cool. Awesome. This is a crazy question. I was not, that was not what I was expecting. And look at that. Wow. <laughs> and we didn't miss anything. We did. It was rad. Cool. Well, I will make sure you get all the links and all that good stuff related to the stream. And thank you so much again for uh, being on the spot today. Yay! I have to go right. to a meeting now. Okay, bye. Thank you, Dory. This is amazing. My pleasure. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. We could do the whole we'll like telling we'll be like southerners trying to say goodbye for an hour if we get on that. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll see I, you next time. See you. I'll start saying goodbye now. <laughs> I'll start saying goodbye now. Bye. <laughs> an hour later.